Hey everyone, Larissa here from Beekeeping Made Simple and I wanted to talk about building your own bee boxes. And this topic came up because I sold a whole bunch of equipment recently. Um, and I'm just uh, downsizing in the amount of beehives that I am keeping and the amount of honey I'm selling. Um, and so I had a bunch of beginner beekeepers, hobby beekeepers come by first and they all built, I had boxes, three different stacks the really good ones, the moderate ones that had some cracks and some that had like big holes in them. And all of the hobby beekeepers and beginner beekeepers took the whole big stack of newish boxes in good shape. And then one guy that worked for a commercial apiary still had like his work shirt on and was opening up his own um, shop, came by and took the whole stack of the bad ones and didn't pay for the nicer ones. And I just thought it was funny because like all the hobby beekeepers are like, oh, I don't want the crappy boxes that are all falling apart. And then the guy from the commercial operation was like, oh yeah, I'll take anything. And he's taking stuff that's falling apart. And he's like, yeah, we just put that through the table saw and fix it up and cut off these parts. And um, it's just funny to see how hobby beekeepers are very like more meticulous about things. And then you see the commercial people are like, yeah, whatever holes. Yeah, this is Hawaii, who cares? I mean, I don't care about that stuff. Um, but, uh, he complimented me on the boxes. I'm one of the kinds of boxes I had, the green ones. And those were the first boxes I built. I made these boxes before I, um, got married, like before my husband and I, I think we had just met. Um, and, uh, so I wanted to talk about how those boxes because it took me forever to figure out how to do it because I didn't have a table saw. I was renting a studio apartment for, from a beekeeper, um, a, a queen breeder, but I was living in their former honey house and it was a shack that had like a hot plate as the kitchen and a sink and a mini fridge. So I wasn't buying a table saw. I don't care if you could find it used or not. It just wasn't anywhere I could put it. Um, and it was really hard for me to figure out how to build these boxes without um, a full size table saw with a dado blade. And um, these boxes are still going strong and this is Hawaii. So we have hot sun and year round beekeeping. So the boxes that I built my first round are still strong and still doing well and um, actually doing better than the boxes I have with the finger joints. So I wanted to talk about that because if you are having difficulty making your bee boxes or maybe you're just discouraged about how much it's costing or like to build your own stuff, um, this is an option and a way to build a really strong box that's going to last. So um, for one, use good wood. You don't want the crappy wood or that wood will fall apart faster. So you want to find the wood that doesn't have all of the knots and stuff in it because um, that'll make it hard to find the places that you can cut it. But um, I used a rabbit joint for my boxes and you don't need a dado blade for that. You don't need a full size table saw, but I did use a mini size table saw. So what you want to do is you want to cut, I mean, just look up a rabbit joint or um, you're going to cut three eighths of an inch deep and three quarters of an inch wide. And so um, two of your panels are just flat um, rectangles. You're just doing a straight cut. But two of the panels, you're going to go three-eighths of an inch deep, three-quarters of an inch wide. And you're going to cut that so that essentially, um, you know, your pieces just like go like this into each other. Um, and I also did an exterior handhold. So you can use a dado blade to do a handhold that makes the typical ones you see for sale on beekeeping websites, but your handholds don't have to look like that. And personally, they're actually kind of a pain in the butt to pick up boxes with those little skinny handholds. Um, that is mostly really for shipping purposes. It's a lot easier and takes up less space when you're shipping boxes that have those just um, little finger holds. And also it's for the commercial beekeepers because when you're loading things on trucks, you don't want exterior handholds taking up space. But if you're a hobby beekeeper and you're picking up a box and it's 40, 50 pounds, I mean, you know, just get a two by four and cut it out so that you're screwing an exterior handhold on that's got like good grip on it for you. There's really no reason why you need to make, be making um, those little finger handholds. Uh, and I have small hands, so if it's annoying for me, I've seen my husband try to help me pick up boxes. <laughs> 
and his hands are considerably larger than mine and a pain in the butt. So um, the other thing is, is that I made boxes with finger joints personally, and then I have boxes from the apiary I worked for. And they also had finger joints, but they bought a higher quality um, boxes made with a higher quality wood. And they also dip it in a vat of beeswax. Now, you're probably not going to have enough beeswax or a vat to heat up that much wax. But you can heat up wax and paint it at the very least on the joints. And that will help um, extend the life of your equipment. So, I mean, it's hot, it's sunny, it, our boxes are out year round. And the boxes I made seven years ago with a rabbit joint, um, and actually I, those I just painted with an exterior paint are lasting well past the ones that I used the finger joint with. Um, but it also helps to do a better quality wood than pine. Um, but the ones I made five, seven years ago were with pine, just painted. And then of course, add the beeswax onto it, especially onto the joints. And that will help it a lot. And, um, you know, I'm speaking from somebody who was out there taking care of these hives by myself. I would take one day to go out to all my yards and do it all. And um, so I tr just moved as fast as I could and was throwing things. Um, I'm not gentle with my equipment. I'm not treating it delicately. <laughs> so, um, and you know, that's one reason why like the flow hive wasn't for me was because I'm not being gentle with my equipment. And so I can't really spend that much money on something and then just throw it. <laughs> um, but I strongly recommend doing a, a rabbit joint on the edges. Um, and so if you're looking for the dimensions for building your boxes, I'm going to put that in the description as soon as we're done, just to help you out a little bit. But so the rabbit joints are three eighths of an inch deep and three quarters of an inch wide. Um, and that's because your wood is three quarters of an inch thick. So you're just um, looking to cut that into the piece. And you can do this with a pretty cheap table saw. The one I bought was like 75 bucks at Lowe's. And it's just that little mini one that's attached to the little metal stand. Um, and then paint it with some exterior paint. If you can buy wood that's nicer than pine, go for it. Not necessary, but does help. Does add a little bit of weight to the box, um, but does help. And if you can give that a coat of beeswax, especially just on the joints, um, that will help as well. And if my boxes can last over seven years out here in Hawaii, then um, probably get a decent amount of time where you are too. Uh, if you have questions, let me know. Leave them in the comments. I'll try to make a video later on where I'm actually building one of these boxes. But for the time being, um, this is good enough, I hope. You can find lots of videos about how to build a rabbit joint if you're curious. But it's uh, pretty simple. Um, some people call it a miter joint as well. And I'll also put a link to someone else's videos with the exterior handholds because I really like them. Or you can actually purchase handholds. There are some supply sites that sell like metal handles that you can just screw onto your beehive that actually look kind of nice. They have a little bit of a design to them and it's a, an easy way to add a little bit of fanciness to your boxes without, you know, painting them or going too crazy. So I hope that helps people because that was a problem I had when I was living in a studio apartment and didn't want to acquire a full size table saw. And it's not really just um, something you can, you know, an alternative that's not as good. It actually worked better for me than the boxes I built with the finger joints. Um, a carpenter who'd been doing, who's been doing carpentry for like decades, let me use his wood shop and he actually did the majority of the work to be honest and i went there and i brought the wood and we built a whole bunch of boxes and those boxes are falling apart some of them are even in the trash pile um and i was really surprised at how quickly those joints fell apart compared to the rabbit joints um, with just a couple coats of exterior paint and uh, heads up if you're building a few boxes because you know you might as well make it worth your time and build a few all at once put the boxes in a stack and then just take a roller <laughs> that's what we used to do at the farm and you can paint a whole bunch of boxes really fast that way
Um, the one tricky part when you are doing a joint like that um, versus when you're using the finger joint is that it's it takes a little bit longer to glue and nail the boxes together because you don't have those finger joints making them kind of like puzzle pieces so that they're stick standing up pretty easily. So what I did was I just took a piece of plywood, you know, scrap wood that was laying around that was bigger than the size of a box. And I, um, so say this is, you know, the scrap wood. I, um, I just screwed on four little pieces of scrap wood standing up on all four sides. So when I put the box in, um, it kind of had like a little bit of a hold to stand it up in so that I could glue those pieces together and make sure that it was all squared um, and before nailing it together. Um, all right, we have questions if you have them. Thanks for watching. Bye.